on a new site. Dropped off a load of stone this morning and the skid steer. 14 by 24 Alaskan slab. This is the hand sketch. A couple man, there's a man door over here in the front a garage door opening and in the rear a garage door opening 14 foot wide this way by 24 deep so first things first like always guys you gotta you got an accessory building you want this parallel with this building you don't want it sitting cocked so the first thing you do is get a range a parallel line off the existing garage put two pins out the same distance run that string line so the the two pins touch with the string pull it and then put your other pins where you want it off the blacktop so we wanted to be 18 inches two foot off this blacktop um and that is my parallel line that will be the front of the slab now there was existing stone here we're going to use this i'm going to cut this out put it in the back because it drops off back here um pretty good so we'll have to back the forms and he'll want his garage backed anyway so we'll use what he has there we should have enough stone to put six inches of stone under the whole center so basically there's a 12 inch haunch alaskan slab i will cut out the six inches all the way and then fill it back in with stone if that makes sense to you leave the 12 inch thick around the perimeter let's get laid out and get cut out all right, just squaring up the pad, getting the layout. So 14 foot, pull the one tape. Get your pins after your parallel. That's 14 foot across. So you're gonna go your 24 depth and you get your diagonal, which was uh, 27, nine and a half. So once you pull that 27, nine and a half, which is here. Bear with me, I don't have my tripod. I'm gonna set you on my knee. 27 and a half, pull your 24. So, let me get you so you can see here. You're on my kneecap. 27, nine and a half, 24. Where's 24? We're way out here, wow. All right, I gotta move. So we gotta go, hey. I knew that was gonna happen, hang on. Let me get you up. Sorry guys. So we gotta move over this way for these to hit. So 27, nine and a half, this will slide like this till you find your square. So 27, nine and a half, which is there. And 24, where they intersect, is dead square. Right here. So, there's my two measurements right there. So pull them right tight. 27, nine and a half, and 24. You just gotta move that pin right under it. And that is square. So we got all four points now. I'll string it up, paint it, and I'll stay outside eight inches or so. All right, got everything painted out. That's my box out. Shot elevations. We were originally going off the top of garage floor. It would be top of garage floor here, but after shooting it, it's way too high. This top of the pin is the top of that garage, which is about 10 inches and back here it was two feet so two foot difference from that top of the garage to there which by eye you would never think it i would think half that but that's why you gotta love the lasers all right let's just back drag some stone Uh, 
no lie, pretty much dead nuts, doing it by eye, right out of the skid steer. Uh, these are my marks. Just shot them with the laser. I was a half inch low here and two inches low here, which, you know, that dropped off. We, I knew, you know, when you make this transition with a skid steer, that's tough to back drag that. But uh, pretty good for cutting it the full depth the first time. So what I'm doing now is going to tamp all this and then we'll raise up our eight inches of stone in the center. And uh, so basically these this the boards sit right on the ground here on the outside perimeter then the, the center will have eight inches of stone which will give us a four inch thick slab throughout the center and a 12 inch thick all around the perimeter two rebars in it wire mesh on top four thousand pound cement all right i compacted the stone sub base and then i sprinkled some more stone in here to get my height so i got blue marks all at the same height and our perimeter is all going to be the same this is the first board that's going in it's ranged with the house i'll pull this and i'll make a u shape with my boxes that way i could still bring the stone in through the back and just blow the whole center in full of stone eight inches thick all right got a u-shaped box a little nightmare going on with this side boards were warped when we put them back in the shop they weren't level or something i don't know they got twisted so I don't have to work with that. But here's my 24 mark here. So we're pretty close. We're a little hot or the boards are up out of the box here. So we'll have to fill this whole thing. Probably going to run short on stone. So everything is square. Not uh, shot in with a laser. It's close. The boards itself. I mean, it's within a quarter inch. I'll tap or cut out whatever I got to do. That's not going to change my center box. I want to get the rest of this stone in for today. And then see where we are at with stone if i gotta bring some in the morning and i may have to swap this board out it's these boards are leaning like this severely once i put my whalers on the top though it will straighten a lot of that out but it's actually you know it's doing a twist instead of uh i don't know it's like a roll this side's not nowhere near as good to work with these boards whalers will get those out <laughs> Definitely going to be short on stone, but I figured it this morning, for some reason I was thinking six inches of stone in there, it is uh, eight, and it called for seven ton, but I got ten ton, so we'll see, see what happens, but this at least lets me get me, so I know where the haunch is, just sprinkle her in, Smells about eight inches. Sounds about right. Yeah, definitely short, short, short. Well, that's all we got for stone. We got a little scrap there, but still not enough. Um, that is great though. Shot in by eye. I didn't, I didn't even rake the sheds. I just take the laser and I knock, like this part was high, knock it with my foot, put the X's where they gotta go. If it needs to be built up, I build it up with my foot like this. That way I know I gotta fill in here and fill in here. But other than that, we need a bunch of stone back here because we gotta back these forms too. You know, you gotta remember the form at this line we're gonna put some stone here or dirt he's got dirt here somewhere we could scrape up but uh a few more tons of stone just grab a full load use what i need and stockpile the rest at the yard this morning i just got 10 ton because like i said it called for seven but uh 
you know, things change in the field, obviously, with elevations. I thought the elevations were a little bit better than they were. This is the only board that concerns me, and I'll straighten that out in AM. Back on site. Brought the stone last night. Swapped out this board this morning. Nice and straight. Got some more stone in here. Gonna tamp it down right now. tamped not bad shot with a laser X's are grade as you see and I didn't rake this at all this has been uh, just put in roughed in and then tamped and it was dead perfect and this whole side is just a little bit low which I'll rake up from there this is a half inch right here and you see it on the point six, which is a half inch 5.8 there's 0.8, three quarters, and that's a half there. Nice and nice. All my boards are in. Just gonna fix this haunch. It's a little tight there. Rake it up, tamp it again. Start pinning it. All right, everything is pinned on four corners square range with the house perfecto tamped and re-tamped gonna start putting some rebar around the perimeter rebar is going in i just lay it in there then i tie it up then i raise it up but get your measurements and i got a rebar bender get your correct overlap that you're supposed to have uh, take this and that's how I measure my rebar. Get your overlap and come here. So it will be a four foot, six inch bend. Once you got your 54 inches here, that's your little gauge. Just take this bender. Bender straight up till it hits the other one. Gives you your 90. So what I got here is number four rebar. Two strands of it around the perimeter. Keep it three inches minimum off each side. And I just uh, put uprights like so, like this one. Every so often where it's going to have a sag and uh, hold them up. Tie them with the twisty ties. Good to go. Get your overlap like this. Tie them. Two inch rough saw cut. I pin the heck out of it. Some ground's hard. If you're in stone like down here, the pins aren't going to hold anyways. So we, I backfill this whole thing with stone. But I put a string line all the way around this thing. And I'll leave that on as I pour. But in the center of these boards on each one, it's called, and I think I invented this, it's called a preload. I put a half inch. This board is actually bowed in a half inch. The minute we pour and that water sets into this wood, she starts to bow out. And we watch it and it goes dead even. I've done a hundred of these. I've got it scienced down precision so each string will have a preload on them and you can see even on this board <clears throat> the board's bowing in and it's a half to three quarter inch in the center and that is where it will that is where <coughs> it will come out dead level perfect every time and you could adjust that as you pour just like you would a poured wall you put in a brace take out a brace but if you don't preload that it's too late you'll never get it in you'll be shoveling and everything else so when you're doing these alaskan slabs and this is only a 12 inch haunch when you do a two foot haunch you best have uh have your game on now carl you could admit i was the first one to show you about the preload you called me crazy but like i said it works so what's next is get the tamper out put wire in it put stone all the way around it and we'll be ready for uh, inspection. Oh yeah, my whalers. Gotta throw whalers on here too, which also helps that bow. So all these 16 footers that I got on here, I'm gonna nail sideways, just like that, right on the tops of those boards. And that will prevent that from uh, bowing also. Cause otherwise you could get an S in it. One pin doesn't hold as good as the next pin, whatnot, you'll, you will get an S. All right, whalers are all screwed on. That's these two by fours on the top. I screw them in from the back side. 
see what we got. Wires all in. Kubota's doing a regen right now. Have to rev it up in a minute after it warms up. Got the wire all in, rebar in, everything's tamped. Got the haunch all the way around. Looking pretty, ready for concrete. What a crazy morning. I've been running around, finally got parts for this. Carburetor issues again, put a new carb on it. Had concrete ordered for 10, 30, 11. They're an hour early sitting here. I'm rushing around, I moved the skid steer, I back over my screed, bent the screed, bent the rod. Totally warped it. I have to try to bend this back to get this going. What an absolute <laughs> disgrace. Boy, am I mad at them white trucks today. I threw my glasses, I said some nasty words. It's got me mad, man. I can't believe I ran over my screen. I just, two hours working on it this morning. And uh, had it perfect. Brand new car, this, that, and smash it. Oh, a couple thousand dollars right there. It is what it is. All right, let's go. Pour the thorn.
try to do this one-handed here. Just bull magging, getting her flat. Well, when it rains, it pours. We just had a, a burst of hail and rain come through right as I was finishing my floating. So, got the tarp real quick, covered half of it anyways, but it don't make. It's got 1% calcium. It's going to bake off. Hopefully, we don't get any more rain. But, I mean, they said just one slight shower at this time. And, I mean, it just clipped us. A quarter mile down the road, it didn't even rain. So, it is what it is. As you guys can see, probably in the video, I am frustrated you win some you lose some this one i lost by crushing that vibra screed for sure but whatever it's all part of the business all right sun come out we just mag floated it off putting our anchor bolts in i'll show you guys the preload if you look at that right now you remember that was three quarters of an inch in look at that string dead on the board so that board with all the stone and the pins by the time the water sits and the vibrator hits it, it walks out three inches. You always put the center of the board to three quarter. I'm telling you. If you pin it and pin it, and you don't pin it every 16 inches, with severe pins, you'll get S's in between the pins also. All right, got the blades dead flat. Not using the pan on this because it's too small, and the floor is actually super flat. Full floated, then Fresno it. Um, got the blades flat. Just gonna run this slurry out with that threatening skies the whole time. Just getting my chamfer after I hit it once. I only hit it still once with the power trial. Get that fat, that chamfer, take this edge, marry it all in. I went around and did all my anchor bolts the same way. This part still needs to be done. Here's the fat from the, uh, the first hit. Get it in around your bolts nice and nice and each hit it will get better as long as it don't rain. It would be uh it wouldn't be as much cream on the top if we didn't get that burst of rain. It'd be a little better shape, but it wouldn't be so messy on my boards like this, but it is what it is. You gotta overcome it. Just hope the weather holds out right now. It's supposed to. Got that calcium in it. That's why I put it in there because I knew it was gonna be cloudy. But uh each hit will get a little bit better. It's definitely hard underneath. Still waiting to give it another hit, going around my edges. Each hit, clean your boards. You see how this, the fat's on there? And you'll get them, each time you'll get them better and better. So they stay clean and actually let you know where the concrete edge is. Just go around your anchor bolts. Fill them in. Make sure they're nice and nice. Hit your edge like that. And then you can stay away from the anchor bolt with the... Uh, Power trial, obviously. Uh, sprinkling just a tiny bit. Driving me nuts. The radar says nothing. We just like the, the wind to kick up. Dry this top up a little bit for the next hit. Yeah, baby. Starting to look good now. That's three hits with the power trial, four hits with the edging. Edging's just about done. Um, maybe a little touch up after, but. Looks probably about two more hits with the trial. Yeah, you could do this with knee pads and 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 your float and trial, your steel, and get away with it. But you're definitely not going to get it this flat. That's 100%. I mean, there's a lot of guys that would just board this off. It is what it is, but there's nothing like a power trial. Hands down. All right, going to hit this for the fourth time. 
each direction each time I hit I went this way first this way keep going opposite directions Yeah, clouds are coming. It says we're gonna get a little sprinkle here at four o'clock. I'm on my last hit, everything's uh, sealed up. One last hit here should seal this top where rain won't even hurt it. I mean, the rain's not gonna hurt this where I already hit it with my uh, steel all the way around it. Just gonna connect the dots through the center and I should be good to go. I'll tell you, this uh, floor is flat. I vibrate, usually you just vibrate the edges and then come down to the center. But because this is bent up a half inch to five eighths, whatever, it's bent up. Uh, you can see where I, I landed right here with the tracks. Broke this and then bent that up. And it's better than being bent down because if it was bent down, it would be digging in the concrete and I wouldn't have been able to use it. I would have had to try to uh, bend it back with the machine. But being aluminum, they don't like to bend back. Um... So that's why I went this way, this way, this way. I vibrated that thing four different ways to get it flat. And it is flat, let me tell you. So let me get this sealed off and uh, call this one a wrap. This is insane. I just got it done with the last hit. Sealed it off. I don't even care about this mist coming down because it ain't gonna hurt that. That's polished now, as you can see. Unbelievable. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed it. This was a stressful one. Well, I couldn't leave it like that. Six o'clock, came back, polished it off one last time, put a nice burn on it just in case. But we finally got blue skies. Well, hope you guys enjoyed it. I know I didn't. Time to load out.